Did you know this tiny little seed grows into this giant tree? Let's explore all about trees. God even filled the Garden of Eden with them. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. Out of the ground, the Lord God may grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, including the tree of life in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord God told Adam he could eat from every tree except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for if he did, he would die. There was a serpent more crafty than any other wild animal that God had made, and he said to Eve, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. She then took of its fruit and ate, and she gave some to her husband and he ate. He drove out Adam, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, God placed the cherubim and a flaming sword to guard the way to the tree of life. Trees are an unbelievable gift to each of us from our divine creator. He filled the Garden of Eden with all different kinds. A tree is a tall plant that mainly has a single stem or trunk and grows branches that support its leaves. Underneath the ground, a tree has a root system that anchors it to our earth. These roots store water and nutrients that the tree needs to grow. There are over 70,000 kinds of trees in the world, and they can live to be very, very old. Some trees have lived for thousands of years. That's crazy. That makes them older than our country. I know. Trees are vital to our existence upon this earth. They are made up of mostly carbon and breathe in carbon dioxide, which is what we breathe out. In turn, they release oxygen, which is what we need to survive. The shade they provide from the sun cools down the air around them and regulates temperatures all over the world. They also have a root system that grows underground, connecting to other trees' roots as well as different types of fungi. It's known as the wood wide web. Scientists have discovered that trees communicate to each other through this connected system of roots. They share water and nutrients with each other, often older trees giving more carbon or water to younger trees or any tree that may need it. Aw, it's just like a family. I know, isn't that interesting? Trees can also warn other trees of danger nearby. They send out chemical signals through their roots, warning of insect attacks. The neighboring trees can then produce chemicals to fight back against the insects. Albert, hi, how are you? We are learning all about trees. Do you ever live in them? Albert doesn't. Most peregrine falcons make their homes, which they call a scrape, on a cliff ledge or high flat surface. They hollow out a little area to lay eggs in and rest. Oh, that's neat. Albert, show us more about trees. From mighty oaks to weeping willows and dreamy wisterias, there's no end to God's creativity found in trees. Scripture tells us in Wisdom 13.5, From the greatness and the beauty of created things, their original author is seen. Look at this beautiful coppery bark on the Tibetan cherry tree, or the stunning colors on a rainbow eucalyptus. Trees come in so many different unique shapes with different leaves and all kinds of fruit. A tree begins its life like any other plant. A small seed finds its way to the dirt from a mature tree by usually wind or animals. When the conditions are just right, it germinates and sprouts. Then it becomes a seedling, which is a young tree, and it develops its first leaves. As it grows, it becomes a sapling, and its trunk and branches get stronger. With enough sunlight, water, and energy, it grows into a fully developed, mature tree. This is where it is able to flower and then grow fruit. 
This stage is so important for our environment. These trees provide shade, habitat, and also keep the carbon down in our world. After many years growing and blooming as a beautiful mature tree, a tree begins the aging and decline stage and weakens. Eventually, a tree may die and become either a snag, which is a dead standing tree, or a rotting log. What is fascinating about this stage is even in their death, trees are still helping our ecosystem. Fungi and other decomposing organisms get to work and use the bark for food, shelter, and nutrients. So every single stage of a tree's life matters? Yes, every single one. Just like you. Even when you were little and could not talk and run and work yet, you matter just the same. Your body is building up and reproducing cells to grow into the wonderful young child that you are. Each year you get stronger and smarter and can do even more. Then you begin to share your talents with the world. It's your time to flower and bear fruit. In Luke chapter 6, Jesus tells his disciples, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is known by its own fruit. We must always remember the more good we put into our growing selves, like practicing virtue, staying close to God in prayer, and being kind to others, the better fruit we will produce. What kind of fruit grows on trees? Great question. All different kinds. Cherries, peaches, plums, oranges, lemons, and limes. There are so many delicious fruits we get right from trees. Apples, bananas, coconuts too. There are also unique fruits like guanabana, dragon's blood, and cannonball fruit trees. Look at these. The cannonball fruits grow right on the trunk of the tree. So interesting. Let's go with Albert to explore the different trees and forests of our world. In the desert, you will find the Joshua tree and the desert willow. These special trees are able to survive in arid and harsh conditions with only a little bit of rainfall. They have waxy leaves that can store up moisture as well as in their trunk. It is believed that settlers named the Joshua tree after Joshua in scripture who led the Israelites into the promised land after 40 years in the desert. It's also an essential part of the Mojave Desert ecosystem. Its branches and trunks provide shelter and nesting sites for many creatures. Scott's Orioles make their nests in its spiky leaves, wood rats build their homes under the protection of their fallen leaves, and desert night lizards rest peacefully throughout the tree's branches. Moving up north into the Midwest of the United States, one beautiful tree that has a special surprise within its branches is called the cottonwood tree. This tree is native to North America and is the fastest known growing tree in the area. It grows six feet per year up to 100 feet tall. But what is truly beautiful is a surprise tucked inside of its branches. There are special sections called growth knuckles, and if you cut this knuckle in half, you will find something spectacular, a perfectly shaped star, which is the tissue that carries food and water throughout the tree. It's perfect. The Midwest is also home to maple trees, which produce sap, a sugary substance that Native Americans first turned into maple syrup. Yum, I love maple syrup. It comes from trees? Yes, guess what else maple trees give us? Instruments. We use maple trees for parts of electric and acoustic guitars, violins, ukuleles, mandolins, and even drums. Wow, I had no idea. Maple trees are also known for their splendor during the fall, as the sunlight fades and the temperature cools. The chlorophyll breaks down in their leaves and the green color disappears, showing us the beautiful bright colors of yellow and orange. Even the stage of leaves dying during the autumn season is breathtaking. This widespread seasonal color change is even observable from space. What fall leaves are your favorite? I love all of them! 
Let's go with Albert now to the tropical rainforests. Look at these gorgeous and lush trees. One special tree is called a rubber tree. It's famous for its milky white sap known as latex, which flows out from the tree when its bark is removed. Far mainly in Southeast Asia, latex is used to create all kinds of rubber, like rubber bands, gloves, and even balloons. Balloons get made from trees? Cool. Guess what other tree is native to the rainforests? A pineapple tree? Close, a cocoa tree. The main ingredient in chocolate. Cocoa beans come from the Theobroma cacao tree. The cacao beans, which are actually seeds, grow inside pods surrounded by a white fleshy pulp known as baba. After many steps, these special seeds created by God get turned into delicious, wonderful chocolate. Yummy! Our final stop are the stunning sequoia forests in Northern California. Look at the size of these trees. They are one of the longest living tree species in the world. They have lived for thousands of years. The oldest recorded was 3,266 years old. These giant ancient trees are also the largest living organisms on the entire earth, reaching heights of 300 feet tall with a diameter of over 25 feet wide. What a sight to behold. They have special fire resistant bark too, which helps keep them safe from wildfires. Whoa, that's amazing. I want to see those someday. But do you want to know what the oldest trees are? Great Basin Bristlecone Pines. They are found in California, Utah, and Nevada. They are the oldest non-clonal species on the planet. Strangely shaped by wind, snow, and rain, they have survived thousands of years. Through incredible empires, ice ages, and even volcanic eruptions. Imagine the stories they would tell us if they could talk. Whoa. I would ask them so many questions about the dinosaurs. What about tiny mini trees? Yes, there are even tiny little trees called bonsai trees. They are natural growing dwarf trees that ancient Chinese and Japanese natives planted in pots and carefully trimmed and formed into lovely works of art. Aw, they look beautiful and just like real trees because they are real trees, just really, really small ones. Revelation tells us in chapter 22, 2, that the apostle John saw a vision of the new heaven and earth that one day we may be a part of. Through the middle of the street of the city, on either side of the river, the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit yields its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So we may get to see the tree of life that God made for us in the Garden of Eden? Yes, according to John, we will. Albert, I had no idea trees were so important and special. Where can you take us to next? Cats, I want to learn all about soft, cuddly kittens.